Be Watchful with Me, Part 3. There is a restfulness in the task of mind watching that is necessary. Necessary, right? There is a restfulness in the task of mind watching that is necessary if you are to watch the mind without judging and without feeling guilty. If you are judging or feeling guilty as you watch the mind, you are not being watchful. You are sleeping. You are sleeping because you believe there is an element of reality within your thoughts for which they can be judged or you can be judged and be guilty. All right. Guilt <clears throat> is nothing real. Uh, and, you know, I used to think it was. <laughs> and when I thought that guilt was real, then what I also thought was if I felt guilty, you know, if I had that feeling in my chest, if I felt guilty, then it means I had done something bad. I was guilty, right? If I feel guilty, it's because I did do something bad and I am guilty. But that's not true. If we feel guilty, it means that we have judged ourselves. You say guilt is the effect of self-judgment. And there's a difference between those two statements. There's a difference between guilty means I did something bad and guilt is the effect of self-judgment. Self-judgment is merely a decision I've made about myself. It does not at all mean that it's true or right. It just means that I thought it and agreed with the thought. That was a tough lesson for me to learn because I really believe that if I felt guilty, it meant I was guilty. It meant that I had done something bad. And the way that I learned that that wasn't true um, honestly was through trusting Holy Spirit more than me. I mean, you know, I had Holy Spirit telling me <laughs> that I was innocent. And then I had my mind telling me, oh, you did that bad thing, you're guilty. And at some point, I had to make a decision, who was I going to trust more? Was I going to trust what I thought about myself? Or was I going to trust Holy Spirit? And if you think about it a little bit, it, it really is arrogant. I mean, I think we read this in the Course, but it really is arrogant to think that I am more right than Holy Spirit. So at some point, even though my mind continued to self-judge and I continued to feel the effects of guilt, and in fact, I think you guys probably know that as we go deeper on this path, those effects of guilt can actually get stronger. I might do the tiniest thing but the feeling of guilt within would be enormous, right? So even though my body and my mind are telling me how guilty I am, um, what I learned to do was just kind of say to myself, but I trust Holy Spirit more. I trust Holy Spirit when it says that I'm innocent more than the fact that I feel so damn guilty right now. I learned to trust Holy Spirit more than my own experience. And somehow that process um, magically worked, miraculously worked, to where I really began to see that my own thoughts of self-judgment weren't meaningful. I mean, I really began to see it in a truthful way. And I noticed that Lord Blue has his hand up. So Lord Blue, what would you like? Is it possible to not follow the true desire and not feel guilty for not following the true desire? That's a good question. Um, and the answer is yes and no. <laughs> the reason the answer is yes and no is you said, um, is it possible to not follow the true desire and not feel guilty? It is possible to not feel guilty. And that's what denial and projection is all about. So um, it is very possible to be not following our true desire 
And so, therefore, we're still listening to the ego all of the time, right? We're still believing we are the ego. We're listening to the ego, and yet we don't feel guilty. But what would be happening in that case is that we would be projecting the guilt. So we may not feel guilty ourselves, but that guy over there is guilty as hell, right? And that girl over there is guilty as hell. So we're going to see guilt. We're going to see guilt. We just may not feel it. What begins to happen, yes, yeah, someone else is, exactly. What begins to happen, though, is as we begin to stop projecting, and by that I mean, you know, when my mind starts telling me that that person over there is guilty as hell, and I start going within at Holy Spirit and, and looking at this and, instead of um, just believing it, what happens then is we start feeling the guilt at that point because we're not going to project it. And um, that's when we have to start doing the belief of letting go of guilt entirely. He's not guilty, and I'm not guilty, because Holy Spirit says we're both innocent. And again, it's the same thing. We have to start choosing to um, trust Holy Spirit more than ourselves. Laura Blue, please go ahead. I see you have your hand up again. So you are saying that ego and guilt are necessarily always together. Yes. Yeah, you're, and the reason for that is ego and judgment are necessarily always together. And so wherever you have judgment, you're going to have guilt. So either I'm going to feel guilt within because I'm really self-judging, or I'm going to see guilt projected outside of me. Um, but I, I cannot listen to ego and not judge because ego and judgment are inseparable. And guilt is the effect of judgment. So... Hopefully that answered that question. All right, so I'm going to go back to the message now. Again, there is a restfulness in the task of mind watching that is necessary if you are to watch the mind without judging and without feeling guilty. Okay, so the very first sentence, there is a restfulness in the task of mind watching that is necessary if you are to watch the mind without judging and without feeling guilty. So what he's really saying here is, is what I just said a moment ago to Laura Blue, is that the ego and judgment go together. So if I'm allowing my thinking mind, my ego mind, to be active, then it's going to see a thought, you know, like maybe it'll see a thought, you know, I think that guy over there is a real loser. And then there might be, you know, again, if I'm a core student and I'm trying to heal, there but I'm doing it with the ego instead of with the Holy Spirit, there might be then a judgment on me for, you know, there you go again, thinking, you know, judging someone. When are you ever going to let go of this judgment? You know, <laughs> So if the ego is engaged while I'm trying to watch the mind, it's simply not going to work because the ego is judgment. So when I'm watching the mind, I also need to rest the mind, which really means not let the ego be engaged. And when the ego is not engaged, then I'm watching the mind as what some people refer to as observer. And what A Course in Miracles calls, I'm watching the mind with the Holy Spirit. What that means is I'm watching the mind without judgment. So I may see the thought in the mind that that guy is a jerk. But I'm able to see the thought in the mind without judgment. I just see, ah, there's a thought. And, and the next thought might be, but that's just a thought I want to let go. That's not a thought I want to put belief in. That thought is not meaningful. That thought is not true, right? And I need to be able to rest the mind and watch the thoughts without the belief and without the judgment. Or else I'm, what I'm really doing is watching the mind with the ego. 